Dr. Karen Weeb. I'm an ornithologist in the Department of Biology and a curator of this vertebrate collection. This collection was started in 1917, so near the founding of the university itself. So the early uh, biology professors back then started accumulating these uh, collections of dead birds, and it's been gradually building up over the decades since. So other students and professors add more samples to the collection. Currently we have about 2,500 specimens of stuffed birds and about 3,000 specimens of mammal skulls and stuffed mammals in the vertebrate collection. Bird specimens are preserved uh, through taxidermy. So uh, typically uh, you make an incision down the center front stomach of a bird and skin it. Uh, you take out all of the bones except for the ones in the legs and the skull stays in the bird skin. But the rest of it is just stuffed with cotton and it has a little bit of borax as a preservative in the skin but the skin dries and uh, that is sufficient to keep it from rotting. So there's really not much left of these birds except for a dried skin and feathers around a cotton batten core that used to be the bird's body. To keep insects from getting in the collection, they used to fumigate it with some really harsh chemicals that are now outlawed because they cause cancer. So what we do now uh, is use just these commercially bought insecticide pest strips that you can buy in hardware stores and we keep these on the trays to keep uh, bugs from moving in. If there ever is an infestation of insects, we have to freeze the skins in a walk-in freezer. So we'll take a whole tray down and cycle it uh, for a few days and kill the bugs that way just by freezing them. Uh, this collection is used both for teaching and for research. So in the labs here at the university, we take specimens out to show students uh, during the classes. And for research purposes, if there's, our, if there's visiting scientists that are studying the morphology or anatomy of mammals or birds, uh, they can travel here and have access to the collection and do measurements and things that they need to do for their own uh, questions. So normally the public does not have access to these because they are very delicate and we need to, pre to prevent the collection from getting insect infestations and other problems with it. But uh, people can contact the department if they are interested in doing some research and we can give them access uh, on a one-to-one -one basis to seeing the collection. Uh, sometimes we have artists that have come in to use this collection also especially wood carvers who really need to look at fine details of proportions and plumage arrangements. So they've booked time with us and sat here at the tables with uh, specimens of ducks or whatever they're carving and uh, drawn very detailed sketches of birds. So they seem to really benefit a lot from having something three-dimensional in front of them to look at. This is one of the oldest specimens we have in our collection and also one of the rarest. It's a passenger pigeon which you may know is now extinct. So this bird, it says it was collected in 1875 and uh, yeah, it was a taxidermy specimen in someone's basement that somehow the museum acquired. But of course these are very uh, hard to come by these days, so we uh, treasure this, this bird especially. There's lots of different varieties of birds and everybody has their favorite, but probably one of my favorites is this northern flicker. 
I've been studying this species for about 20 years, and this was one of, one of the birds that died on my study area in BC a few years ago. But you can see the brilliant red uh, colors uh, on the underwings of this bird. And they just have a lot of personality and flamboyance associated with them. So that's why they're one of my favorite birds.